The Charge of the Light Brigade is a 1936 American historical adventure film made by Warner Bros. It was directed by Michael Curtis and produced by Samuel Bischoff, with Hal B. Wallace as executive producer, from a screenplay by Michael Jacobi and Roland Lee, from a story by Michael Jacobi based on the poem The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred, Lord Tennyson. The music score was by Max Steiner, his first for Warners and the cinematography by Sol Polito. Scenes were shot at the following California locations, Lone Pine, Sherwood Lake, Lasky Mesa, Chatsworth and Sonora. The Sierra Nevada Mountains were used for the Kyber Pass scenes. The film starred Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland. The story is very loosely based on the famous charge of the Light Brigade that took place during the Crimean War 1853 Additionally, the storyline includes an event similar to the Siege of Cawnpur during the Indian Rebellion of 1857. This was the second of eight films in which Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland starred together. A latter film was made in 1968, under the same name, The Charge of the Light Brigade and starred Trevor Howard and Vanessa Redgrave. Plot <inaudible> 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 In 1854, Major Geoffrey Vickers Errol Flynn and his brother, Captain Perry Vickers Patrick Knowles, are stationed in India, with the 27th Lancers of the British Army. It is during the period of East India Company dominance over the Indian subcontinent. Perry has secretly betrayed Geoffrey by stealing the love of his fiancée Elsa Olivia de Havilland. During an official visit to local tributary Raja, Surat Khan c. Henry Gordon, Jeffrey saves the Raja's life while hunting, for which the Raja promises eternal gratitude. Later, Marge. Vickers is stationed at the British garrison of fictional Chukoti, along with British military families, within the part the northwestern frontier controlled by Surat Khan. A British miscalculation leads to premature withdrawal of troops to fictional Lohora, unnecessarily exposing Chukoti. Faced with an overwhelming siege, the British commander, Col. Campbell Donald Crisp, surrenders Chukoti to Surat Khan, who then massacres the inhabitants, including British families. Surat Khan allies his forces with Imperial Russia, whom the British are fighting in the Crimean War, but spares Marge. Vickers and Elsa as they flee the slaughter. This repays his debt to Geoffrey. The love triangle and the quest for vengeance resolve at the Battle of Balaclava. Aware that Surat Khan is inspecting Russian positions opposite the 27th Lancers, Marge. Vickers secretly replaces written orders by Sir Charles Macefield Henry Stevenson to the commander of the Light Brigade, Sir Benjamin Warrington Nigel Bruce, to withdraw from the Balaclava Heights. Vickers instead orders the famous suicidal attack so the Lancers can avenge the Chukoti massacre. Before the charge, Marge. Vickers reminds troops of the Chukoti massacre and directs their anger. Our objective is Surat Khan. Although the 27th Lancers lose nearly all their 600 strength, they successfully breach Russian artillery positions. There, Vickers finds and kills Surat Khan, at the cost of his own life. Later, it emerges that Marge. Vickers wrote to Sir Charles Macefield explaining his actions, a note which he forced his brother Perry to deliver, under threat of court-martial, so sparing his brother almost certain death. After receiving Marge. Vickers' explanation of why the charge happened, Macefield takes responsibility and burns the note to protect Vickers' good name. Cast Errol Flynn as Major Geoffrey Vickers Olivia de Havilland as Elsa Campbell Patrick Knowles as Captain Perry Vickers Henry Stevenson as Sir Charles Macefield Nigel Bruce as Sir Benjamin Warrington Donald Crisp as Colonel Campbell David Niven as Captain Randall C. Henry Gordon as Surat Khan G. P. Huntley Jr. as Major Jowett Robert Barrett as Count Igor Volonov Spring Byington as Lady Octavia Warrington E. E. Clive as Sir Humphrey Harcourt J. Carol Nish as Subida Major Puran Singh Walter Holbrook as Cornet Barclay Princess Begum as Prima's mother Charles Sedgwick as Cornet Pearson Scotty Beckett as Prima Singh George Regas as Wazir Helen Sanborn as Mrs. Jowett Holmes Herbert as Jen O'Neill Uncredited Topic Production Topic Development 
The charge had been portrayed in a British movie, The Jaws of Death, in 1930. Warner Bros. were inspired to make the film after Lives of a Bengal Lancer 1935 had been released to great popularity, ushering in a series of British Empire adventure tales. Mitchell Jacobi had developed a story based on the famous charge but, although Warner's bought Jacobi's script, the final script was closer to Lives of a Bengal Lancer, an original working title was The Charge of the 600, Warner's wanted an all-British cast. Errol Flynn Australian, but often considered Irish, had made such a strong impression in Captain Blood he was removed from supporting Frederick March in Anthony Adverse to play the lead in charge of the Light Brigade. Ian Hunter was connected to the film early on. Anita Louise was announced as the female lead. Patrick Knowles had just joined Warner Bros. at the recommendation of Irving Asher in London, the same man who recommended Errol Flynn. He was given the crucial support part of Flynn's brother. The movie gave an early important role for David Niven. Edward G. Robinson tested for the role of the lead villain Surat Khan. Basil Rathbone was also considered before C. Henry Gordon was cast. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting Shooting started April 1936, during filming on location at Lone Pine, California the unit helped put out a fire which started at a restaurant across the road from where the actors were staying. There was some shooting done in Mexico where there were fewer restrictions on herding animals. The charge sequence The film comes to a climax at the Battle of Balaclava, subject of Lord Tennyson's poem The Charge of the Light Brigade. The Lancers charge into the valley and brave the Russian cannons, and many are killed. Text from Tennyson's poem is superimposed on the screen, coupled with Max Steiner's musical score. Director Michael Curtis, who did not have an excellent command of English, shouted, Bring on the empty horses! meaning, Riderless horses. David Niven used this as the title of his book about the Golden Age of Hollywood. The battlefield set was lined with tripwires to trip the cavalry horses. For the filming of the climactic charge, 125 horses were tripped, of those, 25 were killed or had to be put down afterward. Errol Flynn, an accomplished horseman, was outraged by the animal cruelty and by director Michael Curtis's seeming indifference and attacked Curtis. They were pulled apart before any serious damage was done. The charge sequence forced the U.S. Congress to ensure the safety of animals in motion pictures. The ASPCA followed suit and banned tripwires from films. Unlike Flynn's other blockbuster films, because of the number of horses killed, it was never re released by Warner Brothers, and so wouldn't be seen again until 1956, when Warner Brothers sold the rights to it and other pre 1950 films to Associated Artists Productions and it subsequently premiered on television. Topic. Stylized as a cenotaph in opening credits Topic. Disclaimer at the end of opening credits This production has its basis in history. The historical basis, however, has been fictionized for the purposes of this picture and the names of many characters, many Characters themselves, the story, incidents, and institutions, are fictitious. With the exception of known historical characters, whose actual names are herein used, no identification with actual persons, living or dead, is intended or should be inferred. Topic. Reception Topic. Box office The film was a massive hit in Japan, according to Warner Bros. accounts. The film was the studio's most expensive and most popular film of 1936, earning $1,176,000 domestically and $1,560,000 foreign. Topic. Awards Jack Sullivan won the Academy Award for Best Assistant Director for his work on the film, and the film was also nominated for the Academy Award for Sound Nathan Levinson and the Academy Award for Original Music Score. See also 
List of American films of 1936